All right, continuing on here with our uh, fish anatomy. We just wrapped up talking about the nervous system and um, uh, fins. And I had mentioned here in this that one thing that you would see if you're ever filleting a fish, oftentimes one of the largest things in there is the egg sac or the reproductive organs. So today we're going to talk about fish reproduction. All right. I know exciting topics today. Um, it's actually it's a short topic here. Uh, but it is interesting because um, fish are going to behave very differently than um, mammals and birds and reptiles because they lay eggs that are fertilized externally. And so the in sexual reproduction, the egg and the sperm are actually going to meet outside of the fish's body. Okay, they're going to meet together out in in the wilderness down in kind of some of that rocky gravel in a lot of the um, streams and lakes that they're reproducing in. Um, and then, so it's, it's a different um, process than mammals, birds, reptiles, those kind of things. Um, some fish do bear uh, live young. A couple terms to be aware of is we have oviparous, ovoviparous, that's a fun one to say, and then viviparous, um, I don't know. I, I Those probably will not be on any kind of test that we have. But uh, if you see those kind of terms um, in the future, um, that, that just means that um, how they how they reproduce there. OK, so for fish, here's a look at some fish eggs. OK, so the female fish would lay down in the riverbed and um, deposit these eggs. And at the same time, there'll be a male fish kind of, you know, courting her or, or um, scooping her out. And he's going to deposit sperm at the same time right next to, to her. And they're just going to be using the, the, the water of the lake or the, the river or the stream, et cetera, in order to mix up the, the sperm and the egg um, on their own out there. Uh, we as humans have actually helped this process out quite a bit. Um, part of it is fish hatcheries where we will, um, enable this, but then some of the, some of the things, like if you watch that video on the sturgeon, um, they're actually, they're collecting male and female sturgeon, and then they are mixing the egg and sperm together, um, in a bucket, in a, you know, lab in order to in, ensure that every single egg gets fertilized and help boost some numbers there. Um, but here's a look at some fish hatcheries, and this is actually going to be what our, um, assignment is based on today. Um, fish hatcheries are prevalent throughout the state of Minnesota, uh, especially down in the southeast region where there's a lot of trout farms. Why do we have fish hatcheries? Okay, there's plenty of fish. Why are we spending resources and all these kind of things? Um, not all of our fish are great local reproducers yet uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, some are natural, like there's just Lakes and rivers change over time. Some are due to human uh, land use things. Um, but as we've um, actually we as we've mentioned before, one of Minnesota's huge um, revenues for our state is fishing. All right, there are a ton of people that will spend money in Minnesota in order to fish, and so as a state, it's profitable for us to have um, the DNR and other departments. Um, raise fish in these fish hatcheries and then deliver them to streams or lakes in the southeast Minnesota. It's uh, it's trout that they are raising uh, in um, central and northern Minnesota. There it might be walleye, it might be muskie, it might be some of those things um, in order to stock different different lakes um, that they feel need stocking. And like I said, part of it is um, ecologically to help balance things out. But the majority of the reason why is commercial, All right? People want to go and catch walleye on lakes. And so if your lake is well stocked with walleye, then there's going to be a lot more fishermen coming to your lake, to your town, spending money, that kind of thing. Um, so here's a look at some fish hatcheries. Uh, if we were in person, we'd go take a tour of one. Um, but it's, it's kind of a cool process. If you ever get a chance to go check one out, definitely do that. Um, just seeing how they use uh, you see here on the left, they have these big uh, concrete reservoirs of water, and they use a, a series of gates, et cetera, uh, in order to 
corral and push and maintain fish. Uh, and then when they determine that a fish is a healthy enough size to be um, placed out in the ecosystems, they'll actually load them up into this truck or this is a pretty big one um, or some kind of a, a delivery truck. They'll pull up to the, um, to the stream or lake. And then those little, these little circular things on the side, they'll actually hook up big PVC pipes to that to make sure that the fish are being dumped into the lake. And then they'll drain the tank and all the fish with it into the, the stream of the lake. So it's kind of a cool process. Um, also the same process that if you have a private pond or lake that you're getting stocked, um, they would do that same thing for you there too. So um, at the end there, there's a look at um, salmon reproducing. I encourage you to watch it. These notes are kind of short today. Um, salmon fishing and salmon fisheries are just a huge, huge, huge economic impact, um, especially in states like Alaska. Uh, and they have such a strange um, reproduction salmon do because they start in the, in the river, they go into the ocean for a few years, then they come back home to lay their eggs and in the process uh, die from that, that, that switch over there. So kind of a fascinating look at salmon reproduction there today. Okay. All right.